welcome everyone i'm excited to introduce hari krishnan founder and ceo of polarizer technologies and co creator of specmatic and purpose hari advises organizations on transformation and coaches developers project managers and engineering leaders today he'll present a case study on ui component workflow testing validating entire user journeys by isolating front ends using open ai thanks a lot sadant for the kind words of introduction let me quickly share my screen so welcome everyone to this uh, session about component workflow testing and uh, validating your entire user journeys using api specifications uh, for intelligent service virtualization my name is hari krishnan um, i am a, an enthusiast in the conference space i speak at a lot of conferences and i also like to volunteer at them i'm again honored to be a part of the apm conference here uh my role involves being a transformation advisor a coach and a trainer and of late i've also been in on the api governance strategy business um i am the co-creator of specmatic and perfis and that's quickly the introduction about myself so with that let me jump right in into the content for today's talk all right so let's say we are building a mobile application we usually would have a back end for front end to uh you know uh, aggregate all the responses from our domain services and uh, maybe there is a storage involved there are multiple databases and what not this is a simplified version of what even a small mobile application would involve right and this itself is the back end for the application that we are talking about right but that's our own back end that we control but that apart there would be external dependencies third party integration such as your sms gateways email Uh, servers and payment aggregators and the likes which we have to go through and obviously our backend itself will have to speak with those external dependencies and our own application the mobile app also will have out of band communication with these external dependencies in order to uh, you know complete functionalities now this even though it fits in my screen while looks small enough this itself is fairly complicated in order to uh, test it all at once but any realistic company and the type of case study that we're going to talk about today which is my geo which is more like a super app and that is not going to be anything close to this level of triviality right it's going to be a lot more complex now how do we go about dealing with that kind of complexity let me add one more curveball to this if i am building this sort of an application for the most part the feature may not be available in its completeness across all the components let's say most of this is under construction or some of this is under construction i cannot verify or test features uh, by themselves just if i'm if i cannot even start building these features so to speak right and i cannot say that uh, the domain service team will finish and then the bff team will start and then they'll finish and make their service available to me then i'll start building my application and in between someone might say the third party we have not secured the licenses or the procurement for that so that's not done yet so that's going to take some time the sandboxes are not ready or maybe they will be down now all of these pieces might play and i cannot potentially sit saying you know my application is i cannot something i can build until these pieces are available i need to move forward and this happens to be my system under test for today's case study i need to test this so neither do i have like you know ability to build the application at this point let alone like you know talk about testing and today's stage is that you know we want to move in parallel right we want independent parallel development and ability to deploy with confidence each of these pieces and if i'm particularly an app development team and i'm focused on the mobile i want to be able to make progress independent of my other dependencies now what's the usual answer any uh, you know Uh, anyone in the audience if you could put that in the chat that'd be great what would be your uh, typical way to sort out this kind of a situation can you put that down in the chat please excellent i already see someone saying mock apis thanks if this some yeah great that's great you use proxy man i haven't used it but i'm guessing the concept is pretty much the same which is i mock the api so i can move forward correct any other responses any other approaches people have tried okay great 
keep them coming but meanwhile i'll move forward i think this is a great uh, you know first step that uh, uh, iftisam has given us so let me start with that okay so now the service dependency is not available and like a friend rightly said i would put a service mock or an api mock in place and move forward right this is a very very acceptable uh, you know way to move forward and many companies that i've worked with and i personally uh, have also done this in the past but there's a major difficulty with this approach right let's say i put the service mock together with my current knowledge of what the backend uh, is behaving like however let's say that service has evolved to an api version 2 correct and they either they have not informed me of that evolution or i may have missed that evolution and the mock that i put together hand rolled it let's say i have used let's say via mock or the likes tools like those right where i have like you know started up the mock server with some canned responses that to the best of my understanding how the api will behave i put it together now the difficulty with this approach is when the service is evolving uh, obviously i am not aware of it and i constantly need to uh, do an upkeep of that uh, uh, you know api mock otherwise this service mock that i have hand rolled is not going to be representative of the actual behavior of the real service end result fine i can independently build my application i can independently test my application but when i take it to the integration environment where the real service is deployed things are going to fall apart everyone with me so far so this is the major difficulty that we were facing uh, even in the team that we were working with if we had to isolate we could using api mocks but that api mock had to be in line with the actual service otherwise it wouldn't make sense so how did we go about solving it let me walk you through that but before i get in there anyone else has any thoughts in terms of how you could solve this problem charles proxy okay yeah harshita thanks for that that's also something we used right we could record and replay again the record and replay with charles proxy what happens is i would have recorded it for example in the beginning of the month by the end of the month the service has evolved again which means i need to re record and someone has to uh, diligently do that so but that's also a good technique but that's the same difficulty right so the way we solved this or at least the answer that we found is to have a service mock which is based off of an open api specification i'm sure most of you are familiar with swagger or open api right now having this meant there was an unambiguous documentation of what the api's behavior is supposed to be correct which means now when i boot up my service mock it is working off of this api specification and the service virtualization is truly emulating the behavior of the real service and uh, if the service evolves mm -hmm. the spec evolves with it and thereby my mock is also evolving with the spec so they are in lockstep that's the idea right but at least that's the idea now if i start doing this only on my side it doesn't make sense because for this equation to be complete and to make sure that uh you know the provider team or the service backend team is also keeping their side of the promise that the api specification that they're sharing with me is indeed the true representation of what their application behavior is right otherwise i will be going off of this truth and building my mock and my mock is going to fall apart that's not useful so that's where their service itself could run the same specification as a contract test thereby making sure the they are keeping themselves honest right uh, to the fact that the specification that they are that they are handing out to consumer teams like myself who is building the mobile app uh, they are indeed helping us with uh, the right sort of specification so this way we are keeping both these uh, you know pieces the service mock and the service in lockstep right so that's the in, in immediate intervention that helped with this particular case in isolating it and isolating it with a truly emulative mock now let's talk about the next step here <laughs> how does the service mock work which is based off of api specification first of all any expectation that you drop into a mock like like say the charles proxy or a via mock or for that matter any mock service will take a canned response right which is a request and a response and given this request you give me back this response that's the behavior of any mock server now what a service mock which is based off of an api spec should do ideally is the fact that it validates your expectation or the canned response against the api specification and if it only matches then it should accept it so for example if the apm test that i'm writing 
is trying to set an expectation with the mock server ahead of its interaction with the application. And let's say that API, the, the canned response is not adhering to the API spec, then it should be rejected and it should not get accepted into the mock. Thereby, you get fast feedback that, hey, I made a mistake in the setting of expectation itself, which means I don't need to go further and then figure out that maybe without this, what will happen is only I'll test the app itself and move forward and I'll hit the issue in the integration environment. This is going to prevent that, right? So that's the, uh, you know, one double click into how a service mock should work, which is working off of an API spec. Now, let's get into the crux of the topic for today. Now that we have the background of water, uh, you know, an API mock should behave like. So this is a screen uh, from the MyGeo app itself when I log it. Um, and uh, so in this context, of the screen which I put up. Uh, what do you think is a component here? Any guesses? How would you qualify a component here? Can you type them into the chat, please? Navbar, excellent. Strand, okay. Menu, each icon, mobile, movies, brilliant stuff. Yeah. And search bar, correct. So these are all components, right? But there is an interesting dimension to this components also. Let me walk you through that. Some of you already called it out. So the alerts and notifications, for example, is a component. <clears throat> then there is a banner. This banner is personalized to me, right? For example, this banner is showing GeoCinema, which means probably I am not already consuming GeoCinema. If I am, then it doesn't make sense to waste that real estate to again show that to me, right? So that's personalized. There is an aspect to it. Then there is the recharge section, the prepaid specific section, right? Uh, that is again, because I'm a prepaid customer. Now, obviously the screen is very, very uh, reactive to, or rather it is customized to the person who's logging in, right? There is the profile of the person who's logging in, what cohort they belong to. And then there is another angle, which is basically the features themselves are being A-B tested. And some of the features may be something that we want to canary release. We don't want to release to all cohorts all at once, correct? So if you are doing all that, you know, sophisticated work, then the screen looks very different to you know, each individual or each cohort that they belong to, that they log in. And given this is a super app, this is going to have so much more dimensionality to it. And how do we go about testing it? So that's the big question that, and the challenge that we had in front of us, right? Now, given this situation, sorry, I'll just finish off one more aspect, which I forgot, which is even in this, if I had to test only a screen, it doesn't really make sense. So for example, if I'm looking at a payment flow, let's say I'm trying to get a prepaid, uh, I'm going, trying to recharge, right? It doesn't make sense for me to test only one screen to say, hey, did the payment, pay, payment page load? No, that doesn't make sense. Did the uh, you know payment completed page load? It doesn't make sense. They are all part of a certain workflow, the user journey within which the testing is actually useful and is valuable. So which is where the workflow testing into this component is also important in the sense that it's how are these components interplaying with each other? How are we going to verify that in isolation? And that's the crux of this component workflow testing. Now, how does it fit in to the test pyramid itself? Right? So most of us, while we are writing, let's say a mobile app or a, you know, embedded web application, we already have our unit tests in place in the sense that we have tested the classes, whether the screen independently loads up, for example, in a React application, is a simple JSX loading up are the screen, screen components rendering in the right place given the data. We have isolation tested it at that level, each section of the page. Now, the next step comes to contract testing, which I've already shared a little bit about in the earlier slide where I have taken uh, an API specification, so to speak, and run it as a test against a service. And thereby I've verified uh, whether that service is adhering to the spec. And likewise, I've used the spec as a stub file in order to isolate myself and verify it, right? So again, the contract testing is also taken care of. Then comes the component tests and the API tests, wherein I am at least verifying independent sections within an API or within a UI when it comes to a mobile app, right? So there, again, all of this, we are building up the connections to it until this layer to say slightly larger pieces we are verifying. Now, what is the difference between a component test and a component workflow test? So far, we have never really verified until this layer. We have not verified any journeys or any uh, you know, multiple step process. 
only when we come to the component workflow test are we going through the entire journey, which I believe is a very, very high value test and extremely important to identify if our journeys are intact, because that is what gives us confidence to move to higher environments and also in general uh, to be able to push features uh, and uh, help improve the time to market. So that's the difference, key difference, which is until the component testing, we have only tested independent pieces and sections, verifying the interplay between multiple components, verifying across multiple screens and the journey is the crux of a component workflow test. Okay, so now that I've spoken about where it fits into your test pyramid, and what is the rough percentage that it should occupy in your overall test profile? Let's look at what are the challenges. Now, for uh, argument's sake, let's assume we have the good fortune of the entire architecture being available to us, deployed in its full glory, and we can go about testing it. Right Now, what are the first uh, issues that we will see? First, obviously, deploying the universe itself. Right, I have to deploy my services, make sure I have provisioned the sandboxes of my, you know, uh, third-party vendors, and all the connectivity is in place. All the teams are aligned. Everything, all the particular drops that have to happen to each particular section have been done. Deploying this universe is not easy, and repeating this process is not uh, pain-free, and it's going to be extremely time-consuming. And if you're going to verify multiple journeys every day, this is not going to scale. Second is the test data management, considering the complexity that I already shared with you in terms of the crisscross of what can happen in terms of the cohorts at play and the features that we have to build and the user profile and which user sees what. The, trying to put that matrix into the DB, making sure all the test data exists for it is a nightmare. And maybe you will even do that, but then handling the residual data from that is not a joke. It is, it is a tremendous amount of effort, right? Thirdly, there may be, even if you handle that, there are time-bound transactions. Certain times you have a TOTP, a time-bound OTP, or you have like certain, uh, you know, offers which are alive at in certain date. And I create the offer, I have to make sure it is, uh, you know, uh, at least alive until the duration of the test. And maybe it has to be post-dated or past-dated. All those difficulties also creep up. And simulating all of that at multiple levels, this orchestration is not is not simply possible given the nature of the MyGeo app because it is extremely, extremely complex and it has the, uh, you know, there is that much functionality to it. That's that's the main crux there. Then comes the nature of your third party itself. They may offer sandboxes, but they're going to be rate limited, right? Or they may not be available at all times. We cannot depend on those sandboxes in order to sit and, you know, say that, you know, or we have a test environment which is dependable and repeatable. All of this leads to an overall fragility factor, which makes it almost impossible to, uh, you know, uh, look at your workflow tests at a lower environment, right? So, which is exactly why we went with the approach of service mocks, because I could take all of this complexity away and shift left and start testing my application in isolation. Now, just to give you an example, in the pre in the previous architecture, if I have to start testing for a, a login OTP flow. I need to make sure that I enter a phone number. It goes to the backend. The backend will talk to the OTP, uh, you know, server. The the uh, you know the SMS server. The server will then send that SMS to me, which means that device should have an IMAI number plus a, a SIM uh, module on it. Only then can I get the SMS, and then I have to, you know, enter it and move forward. Sometimes there are delays with SMS delivery, all of that, and forget about even testing it in an emulator, right? Because you cannot have uh, SMS is delivered to an emulator. So even if you say that it's possible to test it with a lot of effort, there are scenarios like this where it's it's not technically feasible for you to do that because of you know such cases. So how did we go about testing this? Very straightforward. I have my service mock where I already set up my request response uh, you know a file, the canned response to deliver the initial response for the home screen or the login screen. Once the login screen came in, I enter my phone number. The phone number has to go to the mock server. Again, the mock server already has a canned response. Given this phone number, assume it's a actual phone number and say it's uh, send him to the next screen, right? We go to the OTP screen. Because it's a mock, I already know I can hard code the mock uh, OTP to a certain number, right? For this phone number. I don't need to depend on a third party or you know have to depend on having a SIM. 
I can directly have the SMS, you know, assume that the SMS is such and such and move forward. And thereby I have the freedom to move forward with an emulator. And once I am logged in, I fetch notifications, which is that icon, which you see at the top. And then I fetch user specific config based on which the home screen configures itself on various micro front ends uh, load up according to the profile of the user. Now, all of these expectations, which we call expectations or examples, the beauty of it is it's being verified against the open API specification of the backend. Again, this to reiterate will give you a lot of safety and confidence in the fact that you can you know, th thoroughly depend on the service mock because this service mock is truly emulating your backend and your backend is also, also held accountable by the fact that you know this API spec is run as a contract test on that side. So that's how we gain the confidence there. So now moving forward, let me quickly show you a, a demo and the demo yeah, I have recorded it for the purpose of convenience and in the interest of time. So here you would see at the top, not sure how legible it is. We have two scenarios, invalid login, and then we have recharge plan. Most of these tests are written in a framework called TestWiz. Uh, Anand would, uh, the first talk today has spoken, ext ext may have spoken about it. So I'll skip through the details here. So the uh, TestWiz framework is integrated with Specmatic. And then Specmatic is serving the, you know, the stub responses. Let me kick off this test. So this is launching the MyGeo app. And then once it launches the MyGeo app, it will go into the OTP flow. First, it will verify for an incorrect number. Obviously, if the number is incorrect, that is also being validated both at the front end and at the mock level, like the real server would behave. And in this case, this is a real OTP that I mentioned about. So you can actually verify that it is actually behaving in that manner. And once I get a real OTP back to the server, sorry, when I say uh, when I put the OTP, which is pre-cooked into the mock server, then the mock server responds with a success response and the home screen loads. And now it's fetching the uh, notifications and the configuration for this user in order to display the specific sections for them. And then we can verify whether this user is a prepaid user or a postpaid user, whether it's behaving according to that. Now we're going through a recharge flow now. Once that guy is logged in, we can figure out whether there's a recharge flow that's also possible. I'll skip through some of these and then take you to the section a little later. And all of these details, we were pushing it to the report portal. And then we could see screen by screen what's happening. And all of the sophistication we could achieve, the fact that we are isolated from the backend and the test could be independently built and uh, you know completely verified on multiple devices also. So that's a quick <clears throat> walkthrough of a serial test where I'm going one by one. The beauty of this is the fact that uh, the, the mock servers are, are stateless, which means you can hit them with any number of requests you want, which is exactly what we did, which is basically we started doing parallel testing. Now that we are have not dependent on a, you know, a real server which can have issues such as, uh, you know, is the data being set up correctly? Will it load? And if there are multiple tests running, will there be concurrency issues in terms of data being updated? That's no, not a risk here. We have fully isolated mock environment, which means I can run a launch two emulators or as many devices as I want and parallelize the tests, which means I can go much faster with my workflows. And uh, of course I can test multiple workflows in parallel. So here we have a OTP login flow as well as a recharge flow going in parallel. And that means I have the flexibility to do this uh, without having to worry about whether my backend systems are going to be able to handle this kind of a, you know, uh, the setup. Okay, so with that, let me pop back in into my presentation again. So this setup also gives me flexibility to simulate certain faults, right? For example, I could say, if the OTP is wrong, what is the behavior that I need to uh, look at in the screen? The second thing which I can also simulate is delays, network traffic delays. And what if, if such a delay should happen, does the mobile app uh, crash or does the mobile app go into a uh, infinite spinner or does the mobile app show an appropriate message saying, this is taking time, can you try again? Is that appearing? So such things, it will be very hard for us to emulate with a real service in the backend. But when we have our own CANT responses, 
we could uh, we can simulate with specmatic that you know uh, there is a delay in this particular request if this is the phone number that's happening i want to be able to verify that uh, if there is a delay how about if the error messages are correctly being handled okay i have a uh, moving forward how did this all fit together in the overall test architecture right i showed you everything running locally and whatnot but then this is part of a larger sophisticated uh, test suite so the one you know a tenet that we wanted to follow is that any test suite that we build has to work on our local machine it should work in the ci and this environment called ephemer ephemeral environment for application testing where we want to spin up a few more of internal services and test them now for this to become uniform we use testwis so that we could test across android apple and web and also simulate multi user scenarios and uh, that's the test setup on the running on our local ci or eat and the device farm itself was browser stack so every all the devices we were using were out of that so testwis would obviously push the app into the device which is running on the device farm and then specmatic stub server would start up on the local or environment or in the ci server wherever it is running and the expectations would be set by expectations i mean the canned responses that i already showed you those would be set up so that in preparation for the test with test that would run on the application now the application launches the test and starts clicking through the screen going through the journeys and then this app has to talk to specmatic stub server now there's a question here how would this work because the device is in the uh, browser stack cloud uh, and uh, specmatic stub server is running either on my local machine or on the ci server how would we go about doing uh, doing this right that's when we use the tunneling approach where browser stack has an ability to open up a tunnel to the environment from which we are testing it which means all these requests could now pass through to specmatic from browser stack device farm to the local environment and finally all of this was set up with apply tool eyes again i'll i think anand may have discussed about it or i'll leave it to some of you to look it up it's for the visual ai testing and also all of this reports would go to the report portal so this setup any of us the developers or the estates we could run it on a local machine verify it as easily as we could and the very same setup would uniformly run even on the ci servers right the beauty of this is the fact that on the device farm since we could scale the number of devices uh, we can also test a lot of these workflows in parallel so that's how we set it up and this uh, you know made way for the next set of tests which is ideally what we wanted to go about which is uh, sorry the one difficulty that we were facing at times here is the fact that the api specifications may not be available for the backend that we're working with right either for that particular scenario or for uh, you know uh, an entire journey right which we will have to go over so what we did is using the specmatic proxy recording mode we would put the proxy in between the mobile device and the backend in a let's say a staging environment or some sort of a test environment and let the app talk through specmatic to the mygeo backend and then come back right so on the proxy would record all these interactions and then generate the open api specification in addition to the expectations or the example files that i already spoke about because these are generated obviously they are going to be adhering to the open api spec and this gives us a starting point to move forward instead of having to uh, manually capture what is the api spec that is being uh, you know exposed by the backend right and this also gave us like a more accurate representation because given sufficient traffic passing through the proxy we could accurately model what is the api specification uh, yeah. which is actually modeled after the real behavior rather than being a documentation now once i have sorry once i have the api specification i do not have the need for the real backend anymore which means now i am in my isolated test setup and i start up my stub server feed the api specification and the expectations to the stub server and the app just starts so literally what i would do is to go through the login flow start the mobile app put the proxy in between run through the interactions and once i'm done i have a bunch of api specification and example files take them out i don't need to talk to the uh, you know the server anymore in fact the way we would test it is you would completely get off the vpn completely get off the network and then we could isolate and test it on a local machine with the stub server 
And that's the beauty of it, which means now these open API specifications and expectations could be shared across the team and each team member had the ability to, uh, you know, independently start the app and test it. This proved to be a very big productivity boost for the front end because the mobile app now is not, you know, tied to the fact that something is available in a staging environment or in a higher environment, which they have to uh, depend on. Ultimately, it's not just the story of the local and CI, right? In the local and CI environment, we simply run the test with test suite, verify across Android, Apple, uh, you know, web and the various plethora of environments across the, you know, various combinations. And here we could just do with uh, stubbing out my geo backend itself and complete. But this paved way, uh, this setup paved way for the fact that once I'm done testing the mobile app in its isolation, it also gives me the opportunity to test my internal backend, right? So this is an environment for application testing or ephemeral environment for application testing. Here, I do the same test suite. It's reusable, right? It's completely, uh, you know, it's oblivious to the fact that what's running there. And my, my Geo app is pretty much remaining the same. And here I run my own backend and I let that completely work because uh, I want to verify if my app is integrated with my MyGeo backend. And this time around, external dependencies, I stub them out with Specmatic. So that way, the test that we wrote early on to make sure we can verify workflows for the app in isolation, now scaled to the point where I could say that my external dependencies are still going to be having those kind of difficulties, right? I cannot depend on always testing with the real fellow. So there, uh, we said we'll test the front end against our own backend, but the external dependencies will stub it out. Again, the same technique, rinse and repeat, where API specifications are available, great, reuse them. Where they are not available, we could always record them with a proxy and move forward. So this is the approach that we uh, used to go about getting this tested. And uh, that was the entire journey uh, in terms of how we achieved the uh, workflow component, uh, UI component workflow testing by stopping out the backend based on API specifications. Now I'll stop there and I'm happy to take questions now. Yeah, so we have a couple of questions. I think first we can start with someone anonymous. Uh, this is like only common functionality can be tested with uh, this mock services. Am I correct? For anything that is new, we have to wait for development and then only we can test. Uh, for common services, I'm trying to look up the Q&A. One second. Yeah. Anonymous. This is like only common functionality can be tested with mock services. Am I correct? For anything new? No, in fact, it is the opposite, right? For anything new is where you have, uh, like, you know, you can obviously test the common services already built. You can isolate and test. But for anything new, if the backend is not ready and you want to start building the front end and you want to start testing the front end, that is where it's even more useful because the front end and the back end can agree on an API specification and capture their agreement on the open API spec itself, that this is how the API is going to behave. These are the methods. These are the operations. These are the schema of the responses. Once I have that in place, I can independently move forward. I'll start setting up my own test data and the test data is always going to be validated against the spec. So I can start, uh, you know, building out my front end based on the API specification and move ahead. And likewise, in parallel, the backend team can also start using that API specification as an acceptance criteria for building out their backend. And they become more like, you know, that's their, uh, if they get all the tests passing based on the API specification, then they are also done. So we both can move independently and in parallel. I hope that answers your question. Then we have another one from Saurabh. Uh, do we have this as open source, some GitHub link uh, to visit the code for this setup? Certainly. So Specmatic is available as an open source project. I will just paste that link in the chat. You can also look it up yourself. And uh, yeah, I'm pasting the GitHub project link in the chat. Right. Then we have another one from Iptisam. Uh, for device to talk to Specmatic local server, did you just use browser stack tunneling or you had to uh, made, make some changes in your app code as well? Very good question. Very good question. So in the apps, usually what we do is we have multiple profiles. Let's say a, a dev profile, a test profile, and a production profile, right? 
in the dev and test profile i will uh, you know point the uh, you know the backend server url will be updated to point to specmatic so when i'm starting the app i will have to give it the profile name in the context of which i'm starting and then it will accordingly talk to that particular backend url so all i'm changing is based on the profile which url you speak with and that's it and obviously when we are shipping the code to production uh, most of these depending upon which stack you are on will not even get shipped right you're pretty much pushing a configuration and the configuration will say which server to talk to so there is no code change so to speak it's a config change follow up question from him so uh, does this service mock mean that you mocked the entire backend or only partial requests were mocked for your backend uh so like i said there are two use cases right one is the entire backend was uh, mocked for the ui component workflow testing in the lower environments like my lo local or in the ci right but then when i'm trying to test this application in my fmrl environment for application testing in the where i have my own backend so the my own backend uh, is is still the real service that's working but then any third party services are mocked with specmatic so ultimately the principles and concept of how you mock a service remain a constant uh, the context in which you are using it decides what you want to mock so if i'm wanting to isolate only the app and test it then obviously i'll completely mock out all the entire backend but if i'm maybe in a different setup where i have confidence in a certain service and control over certain service and i do want to include it as part of my system under test then that would not be mocked everything else uh, would be mocked so the question comes down to what uh, how are you defining the boundary of your system under test how frequently you run proxy recording that's a very good question the proxy recording how often you do it is going to uh, decide the uh, what do you call the like you know so there are two answers to it right let me start with that most of the time the proxy recording as an approach was used to give a head start to the team but today i do not have an open api or a swagger in my team right so for me to put that together or generate it from the code there are certain difficulties and adds an additional burden instead we start with the proxy we record the current version of the api specification and that gives you gives the team a head start going forward whenever they need to make a change to the api they will use that api specification as a medium of communication and collaboration they can make changes to it check it into the central contract repo we maintain all our api specifications in a central repo in git and we work off of that and that is where that's basically the in this model what i'm talking about the proxy is uh, acting as a, a utility to give you a head start to obtain an api specification to start with Okay, so that's internal teams but if you are working with a third party where the team is probably never going to provide you with an api specification or maybe they do not have it in their immediate roadmap to give you one then in which case we had a jobs which would run nightly proxy uh, the run the proxy and then once you generate the api specification we would run that spec as a test against that service on a periodic basis the moment the test starts breaking it means their apis have either evolved or changed we could also let them know that they are probably broken backward compatibility with us and at that point that's also a signal to re-record the api spec right so those are the two models in which we have used them not just in this team across several teams good yeah. question by the way yeah so we have a question from indranil how are you covering kafka grpc or similar flows excellent again as much as we like to cover uh, request response and synchronous flows we also have like event driven architectures which are like a very big part of any large scale systems and any large scale system cannot do with purely request response it has to deal with async so uh, the specmatic stuff and uh, service virtualization server that we use also supports grpc and graphql so in many cases uh, not in this particular app in other apps where there are graphql backends for aggregating across multiple services we were able to stub it out with graphql and with grpc we were able to do the same thing and of course with kafka async uh, we can async api specification is something that uh, specmatic adheres to also and uh, async api specification under its wings will help us uh, you know documents the ability to capture kafka or google puffs or jms to that matter all of those are also covered and we have stuffed those as well 
We have a question from Teng. Um, how can we utilize the mock stub server with the TDD development mode? Mock stub server with the TDD development mode. That's an interesting question. So usually the way I look at it is I want to start building my front end. So in which case I like if I were to write a, a TDD flow in a regular class setup, right? I would there are two, three aspects I would look for. One is when I build out the test, I write my test first, and then I say, I want to test this particular class. And then that class will probably have a dependency which does not exist. So that class, I would have to mock out ahead of time, correct? Using some mocking framework like Mockito or Unmock or based on the flavor or the language that you're using, right? And that I would uh, you know mock out at set expectation. Like when you receive this method call from my system under test, then you give back this response. And thereby, then I isolate my system and I verify and test it. So this is a typical TDD flow. Now, uh, elaborate, you know, sort of extrapolating this TDD flow from a single class to an entire mobile application, it would look pretty much conceptually similar, which is I am writing uh, an acceptance test at the at the very large level, like maybe with a test base or something like that, where I write an acceptance test for the mobile app to say, hey, if I click on this button, I want this particular uh, you know, a um, list of messages to open up, correct? And for this to happen, the dependency backend service needs to return, uh, you know, a list of messages, correct? So, but that service doesn't exist yet. So what do I do? I use a, a specmatic mock, which is a service virtualization, which is a wire compatible service virtualization. So from my test base, I would set expectation that when this request comes to you, give me back this response. So technically speaking, even without the backend, I can test drive the development of my front end. So this is one part of the answer. Now in doing so, uh, I have an API specification for the backend, right? Now that API specification itself becomes a contract test and that's the beauty of it. For the backend team, I can hand this API specification to them and they also have a test-driven development workflow by virtue of running the same spec with Specmatic as a contract test on the backend. And they have free tests to leverage and that gives them the ability to do TDD workflow on their side also. It's a very interesting question. I hope I answered to the best of what I could. Great. I know we are a little short on time, but uh, we have a lot of questions and we do have hands raised. Uh, we do have the Hangout se uh, session post this call where Absolutely. you can connect with Hari. Um, uh, he'll be there for the next 15, 20 minutes if you all want to catch up with him one-on-one uh, -on -one basis. But yeah, thanks a lot, Hari, for your time. This uh, was indeed insightful and we have had some wonderful insights uh, shared today. Thanks a lot, everyone, for being a part of this session.